Senator Steve Yarbrough is back in the news, defending himself once again for something that is really indefensible, namely his self-dealing in the state legislature, where he has sponsored legislation that has resulted in making him a millionaire, all by redirecting your tax dollars into his own pockets. So let's explain how he does this, how it's legal, and what's new. Yarbrough, a Republican from Chandler, continually has sponsored legislation that expands the private school tax credit program. This is the unconstitutional program that allows the state to redirect your tax dollars to private schools. In order to skirt the Constitution, the legislature created pass-through organizations called school tuition organizations, or STOs for short where taxpayers can send their tax dollars directed to private schools so they never technically end up in state coffers. That's how the legislature gets around the express prohibition in Arizona's constitution against public tax dollars being spent on parochial schools. Now the directors of school tuition organizations, which I'll refer to as STOs, get to keep 10% of the taxpayer funds received for quote-unquote administrative expenses. So Senator Yarbrough, who has sponsored numerous bills to expand this industry, which happens to be his industry, runs the second largest STO in Arizona, the Arizona Christian School Tuition Organization. With his help, the amount of money that can be directed to these STOs has increased from $400 for a couple in 1997 to two thousand dollars now. In addition, a new corporate program for private school tax credits has also kicked in. Now, Yarbrough doesn't just pay himself a salary as the head of an STO, although he does pay himself a sizable salary at $96,000 a year, but a Tucson education advocate and parent, Jen Darlin, who's part of our group, the Arizona Education Network, discovered that he has found many different ways to dip into the taxpayer pot. He pays himself almost $50,000 in rent for an office he owns. He co-owns a tuition processing company that he pays $426,000 a year. He's made $127,000 worth of improvements on the office building he owns. And he paid himself $12,000 a year for legal services, even though his bar license at the time was inactive. He's also used your taxpayer dollars to buy himself two luxury company cars, because one is never enough. Those cars are Infinity sedans. Sounds a little Banana Republic-esque, doesn't it? Because Arizona has no true conflict of interest laws, lawyers at the Capitol say what he's doing is perfectly legal. The Ethics Committee, of which he was once chair, has never batted an eye. Democratic legislators have tried to pass legislation shutting this type of conflict of interest down, but not surprisingly, those bills never get a hearing or never make it out of committee. What's new is a CBS Phoenix report aired recently where Yarbrough was captured on camera for the first time defending this blatant conflict of interest. Also in that report was a string of emails where Yarbrough comes across as incredibly evasive, arrogant, and condescending to the CBS reporter. First, let's go to where he was captured on air. Now, he did not agree to an interview. In fact, he refused to answer any questions until the CBS reporter, Morgan Lowe, disclosed who his quote-unquote critics were, and until Lowe explained to him exactly which legislation he had sponsored benefiting himself, as if he didn't already know the answer to that question. When Morgan Lowe did confront him outside his office on camera about legislation he sponsored, specifically SB 1047 in 2012, which basically doubled private school tax credits, which had already been doubled in 2010, Yarborough lied on camera and said he wasn't a sponsor. In the broadcast, Morgan Lowe produced the very legislation showing quite clearly that Yarborough was a sponsor. So, lying quite blatantly to the public seems to me to be an ethics violation. Also, Yarborough has reactivated his membership now as a licensed attorney with the Arizona State Bar, which also has ethics rules. It would seem to me that blatantly lying to the public and member of the press in this manner is not fitting behavior for a licensed attorney. 
Yarborough tried to suggest to the reporter that the reporter was being used for political purposes, and that's why Yarborough wouldn't answer questions until knowing who his critics were. Well, Senator Yarborough, how about the editorial board of the Arizona Republic is one of your chief critics? They don't have a political motivation, and here's what they have said, quote, we have complained many, many times about this egregious conflict of interest on Yarborough's part, to no avail. There is no act of lawmaking more self-serving than Yarborough's cushy arrangement with his legislating cronies. But they remain utterly deaf to criticism. It is time this pocket stuffing stopped. Now, according to Senator Yarborough in his emails to the reporter Morgan Lowe, reporting on this story is just, quote, beating a dead horse and being asked questions like, quote, why do you sponsor any legislation that would affect your business is like being asked, quote, when did you stop beating your wife, according to Senator Yarborough. I would say that the only thing taking a beating here is the public trust. Yarborough has violated it again and again and again, and if the Arizona legislature doesn't want to be seen as the banana republic it appears to be, then legislators should do something about this once and for all.